couple of viewers asked me to do a video on uh, Jupyter Hub deployment in Kubernetes. So that's what this video is about. I'm not going to go into detail about Jupyter Hub. If you are in artificial intelligence or machine learning field, you probably might have used Jupyter Notebook and possibly Jupyter Hub as well. So this is not a tutorial about Jupyter Hub, but how to deploy Jupyter Hub and Jupyter Notebook in Kubernetes. All right, let me bring up my notes here. All right, so this is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to deploy Jupyter Hub in Kubernetes without authentication or TLS. So this is going to be a simple getting started guide. Maybe if I get time, I can do authentication and TLS in a separate video. But the idea is, you know, you can install Jupyter Notebook in your workstation or in your laptop, whatever it is. But if you want to allow a group of people to use Jupyter Hub and you and you want to deploy this in a cloud environment like Kubernetes, then you can make use of Jupyter Hub. So Jupyter Notebook is nothing but a documentation system. So like if you've used Microsoft OneNote, it's kind of similar to that, but it contains, but it can have live code in it. All right. So, so once we deploy Jupyter Hub, I'll show you a quick demo how to how the Jupyter Notebook looks and how you can actually use it. In terms of prerequisites for this video, if you want to follow along this video, there are a few. If you basically, obviously, you need a Kubernetes cluster. If you're using my Vagrant environment as your Kubernetes cluster, then you have to bear one thing in mind. In my Vagrant environment, I've allocated two gig of RAM and two CPU for master nodes and one gig of RAM and one CPU for all the worker nodes. So with that configuration, you won't be able to test Jupyter Hub and Jupyter Notebook. So you need at least two gig of RAM on your worker nodes. So for this demo, I've updated my Vagrant file, my Vagrant environment to give four gig of RAM for each of my worker nodes. So that's one thing. And then you need to have Helm 3 installed. I've got Helm 3 installed and we'll be using Helm way to deploy Jupyter Hub in our Kubernetes cluster. The third prerequisite is to have a load balancing solution. If you are doing this on a laptop, or an on-prem bare metal Kubernetes cluster, you need to have a load balancing solution. I would uh, recommend Metal LB. I've done a video on Metal LB because that's the way we are going to access Jupyter Hub and obviously the uh, Jupyter Notebook. And then finally, we also need some form of dynamic volume provisioning, right? Because each of the Jupyter Notebook will require persistent volume. If you want to bring down the Jupyter Notebook and uh, bring it up again, we need a way to persist the, uh, the data, right? So we definitely need a dynamic volume provisioning. So I've done a video on dynamic NFS volume provisioning. All right, so those are the four prerequisites. You need to have Kubernetes cluster. You need to have Helm 3 installed. You need to have a load balancing solution obviously if you're in the uh, cloud using one of the managed kubernetes service you don't have to worry about the load balancing and then finally dynamic volume provisioning in my case i'm going to use dynamic nfs provisioning okay so if i search in youtube for just me metal lb so cube 33.1 how to deploy and use metal lb in bare metal kubernetes so i would recommend you i would suggest you to watch this video if you want to deploy a load balancing solution using metal lb and if I search in YouTube for just me dynamic NFS, I did a video recently on that as well. So these two videos, 23 and 20 are quite old, like two years ago. The one that I did five days ago is this one, a guide to setting up dynamic NFS provisioning in Kubernetes. Right, so I've got my Kubernetes cluster ready. Let me quickly show you my cluster. Cluster info, get nodes, so 1.20.5, one master, two worker nodes. As I said, these two worker nodes have four gig of RAM each, but just one CPU, that's fine. Okay, get pods, the usual system pods running, right? And if I show you what's in my Metal LB system namespace, so you can see controller speaker, this is the basic Metal LB stuff. And I've also got the NFS dynamic provisioning in the operations namespace. NFS subdir external provisioner. And if I do kubectl get storage class. So I've got this NFS client storage class, which is the default storage class. When it comes to deploying Jupyter Hub, you need to make a note of your storage class because my storage class is the default storage class. I don't have to specify anything, but if you have storage classes, but none of them are said to be default, you need to make a note of which storage class you want to use for Jupyter Hub deployment. And then when it comes to deploying the Jupyter Hub, we will be updating the Helm values file and you need to enter the, um, the storage class in the value study YAML file, which we will see shortly. All right, so that's my Kubernetes cluster. And if I do which Helm, I've got Helm. Helm version is 3.5.3. .3. Okay, let me go to the documentation now and I'm gonna search for Jupyter Hub Kubernetes. And the first link here, zero to Jupyter Hub with Kubernetes documentation. Okay, so we've got our Kubernetes cluster ready. We've got Helm deployed. 
So now set up Jupyter Hub, installing Jupyter Hub. So that's what I'm going to do now. And if you look under my video here, I'm looking at the latest version of this documentation. But for this video, I'm not going to use the latest version. Instead, I'm going to stick to the version 0.11.1. So if you're watching this video in the future and if you're using the latest version of the documentation, bear in mind that the process, the steps that I'm showing you here today for 0.11.1 might not be the same if you choose the latest version. So I'm whatever I'm showing you in this video today is about 0.11.1. Okay. So we've got our documentation for 0.11.1. Okay, so installing Jupyter Hub, the first thing we need to do is we need to add the Helm repository for that. I'm going to copy that, paste it here. And if I do Helm repo list, so we have the Jupyter Hub. And if I do Helm search repo Jupyter Hub, I've got a couple of charts in this repository. So the one that I'm going to use in this video is this one, Jupyter Hub. And the chart version is 0.11.1 and the app version is 1.3.0. In the documentation, I'm using 0.11.1 and in the repository, the latest version is 0.11.1. Okay, we're going to install Helm. Sorry, we're going to deploy Jupyter Hub in our Kubernetes cluster using Helm. We've got the Helm repository added. And before installing it, I'm going to pull the values file. So Helm show values so that's the chart and i'm redirecting that to a temporary yaml file all right done that and i'm going to edit that file we go to the top of the file so here you can see all the list of options whenever i deploy something using helm i just don't blindly do a helm install instead i just do a helm show to fetch the values.yaml file so that i can see what options i can change and things like that before actually deploying it so that's the hub the service is cluster ip and if you go down here storage is one gig so the hub pod is going to require one gig of dynamic volume, so persistent volume. And here is where you need to specify your storage class name. If you don't have any default storage class, specify your storage class here. So in my case, I can do NFS client. So that's my storage class. I don't have to do it because that's the default storage class, right? All right, so that's one thing. And then you can see here, there is the uh, resource request limits for CPU and memory. And then we've got the proxy. So shortly, we will be updating the secret token. So we need to generate a secret token and then we need to put in that here. And then if I scroll down again, this service is of type load balancer. So that's why we need a load balancing solution in your cluster. And if you want to use node port, if you don't want to use load balancer, you can still use this node port here and then again for the proxy part you have the resource request for cpu and memory okay https is disabled for this video i'm going to leave it disabled and there's an option to use let's encrypt to provision certificate using the uh, the let, let's encrypt production server but if you want testing i would advise you to go with the let's encrypt staging server right here again you have the capacity 10 gigs so that's another dynamic volume provisioning so every single jupyter notebook that we are going to launch will require 10 gig of capacity you can obviously change the values here and again here if you want to use a specific storage class you can mention the storage class here okay so that's our values.yaml file values file for jupyter hub and if i go back to the documentation and scroll about there's a command here using OpenSSL, and i'm going to run that command which is going to generate a 32 byte random string going to copy that and I'm going to edit my values.yaml file and go to the top search for security token sorry secret token and paste the token here and now we are good to deploy Jupyter Hub okay so if I do kubectl get all in my default namespace I don't have anything so now I'm going to use helm to deploy Jupyter Hub helm install jupyter hub so that's just the name of the release that you want to use you can give any name you want and that's the helm repository and the chart and we are passing the minus minus values file because we are overriding some of the values in the yaml file we we need to pass the values file all right and one more thing that you can do is if you want to install a specific version of the chart you can use this version option 0.11.1 because 0.11.1 is the default version the latest version in my helm repository i don't have to actually use it and again i'm going to deploy this in the default namespace but if you want to deploy this in in its own namespace let's say you want to deploy this in the jupyter hub namespace sorry you need to specify namespace is jupyter hub and obviously you need to create this namespace prior to running this command 
or if you want Helm to create the namespace for you, you can give the option minus minus create namespace. But for this video, I'm going to use the default namespace. So this one is going to take a couple of minutes even to give some output. And then I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's complete. All right, the command completed. And if I do Helm list, that's Jupyter Hub. But if you install Helm, if you install Jupyter Hub in a different namespace, you have to do Helm list minus n and the namespace. If you use Jupyter Hub, it's Jupyter Hub. Or if you want to show the Helm installation, Helm deployments across all the namespaces, you can use minus a option. So as you can see here, there's Jupyter Hub and NFS Subdir external provisioner under the operations namespace. Okay, so Helm status Jupyter Hub. All right, so we've got Jupyter Hub installed. And if I do kubectl get all, and the hub pod is getting ready. It's actually running, but it's not ready yet. But if you look around here, so there is a couple of few deployments here. There's a hub deployment, proxy deployment, user scheduler deployment, and there is one stateful set, user placeholder. So the important bit here is this service proxy public. So that's our entry point to Jupyter Hub. And the proxy pod is this one. So that's running fine. And because I've got Metal LB installed and I've got the external IP address, so that's the IP that I need to use to get into the Jupyter Hub, okay? Let's do kubectl get all again and see if the yeah the hub pod is also running fine cool so we need to access Jupyter hub using this external IP the load balancer IP so if I open up my web browser and go to 127 16 16 240 which is the load balancer IP address I'm greeted with this sign in page so because we're not using any authentication or any TLS you can see it's just plain HTTP we're not using HTTPS so username and password is just random username and random password you can use any username and any password so for this uh, demo let's use Venkat N and give it any password you like Right, so it says your server is starting up. So what it's actually doing is it's creating a pod. It's creating a Jupyter Hub pod and it has done already. Right, let me increase the font size. So that's your Jupyter notebook. You've logged in through the Jupyter Hub. So back in the terminal, if I show you kubectl get pods, and you can see there's one pod here, Jupyter Venkat N. So that's the new pod that got created for me. So that's our hub. Now I can go to the control panel and I can say stop my server. Okay, my server is stopped. I can log out and back in here if I do K get parts my part is gone so my part is getting terminated here right my part is totally gone so I can now go in here and I can again log in and it will bring up my server again but if you don't want to stop your server that's fine you don't have to stop your server all right let's do some basic quick demo kind of thing so I'm in my Jupyter notebook I can actually create a new text file let's say echo or let's say hello world hello world okay and I can change the name of the file here demo text right so that's our file that I just uploaded it's kind of like a documentation and let's say if you want to create a new directory I can do new folder and I can rename the folder go back select the folder and I can rename it to demo that's renamed and in here I can do things like I can upload a picture let's say I want to upload my monk wallpaper and if I click on that so that's my default wallpaper okay so that's Jupyter notebook the important bit the interesting bit is that you can have live Python code in your Jupyter notebook so let's have a look at that so I'm gonna create a new Python 3 notebook I can say print for example hello world and I can run this example yeah that's fine and I can do import date time date time dot date time dot today I can run yeah that works fine so that's the example of a live code and I can save this oh, it's already saved All right so I can save it like Python demo Right, that's done. And here you can see that's my IPython notebook. So that's the extension you get. All right, so we've created a text file, we've created a folder, and we've created, we've uploaded files, we've created a live Python code. So this is what a Jupyter notebook looks like, but I don't personally use Jupyter notebook because people wanted me to do video on that. I gave it a try, but I don't have any requirement to use Jupyter Hub. So that's how it actually looks like. Okay, let me log out and log in as another user, okay? So back in the terminal, if I do k get pod, so that's my Jupyter bank at 
10 bar. Okay, so if I do kubectl get pvc persistent volume climb, there are two persistent volume climbs. So one for the hub itself, so which is this hub part. So we've got one gig of volume provisioned using my NFS client provisioner for the hub and another volume for my user Venkatian 10 gig of volume so now i'm going to log in as a new user which means it's going to spin up another pod another jupyter notebook for that particular user okay so now i'm going to log in as alice and give it a password and it's starting up a new server for alice okay i can see the event logs here what's uh, going on that's my jupyter notebook for another user and back in here if i do kubectl get persistent volume climb you can see claim another 10 gig of claim for alice and if i do k get pods jupiter alice okay okay i want to do another testing here so let me log out and log back in as venkat n it didn't create the uh, server this time because the server was already running the jupiter notebook was already running and now I'm going to go to the control panel and stop my server. Okay, so I've stopped my server. I've logged out back in here. If I do K okay, get pods, Jupyter Venkatan is getting terminated, but I had content in my notebook. I had a Python code. I had a text file. I had a directory. I had a wallpaper uploaded to my notebook, but my pod is now gone. All right, so if I do K okay, get pods, my pod is completely gone. So now I'm going to log in as myself again, Venkatan. And it's spinning up a new pod for me, new Jupyter notebook for me, but it's going to attach the same persistent volume so that I get all my content back. All right, so if I do K get PVC, yep, that's my PVC, it's still there. So I think that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, give it a try. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.